stories about midlife crises or about academics who think they're poor because they don't have a library in their house. Don't tell me about women who know they're beautiful. Don't tell me about the men who get them. Don't tell me about the emotionally unfulfilled, the ones who pour themselves into the wrong wine glasses. Tell me about the ones who are still trying to get the damn bottle open. Tell me about the ones trying to make this month's rent. Tell me about the guy with no teeth trying to eat a steak. Tell me about the girl trying to cover up her belly, her scars, the bruises. Tell me about old gippy-ass James throwing darts down at the pub in his gippy-ass way. Show me how he lights that pretty girl's cigarette. He might not be able to do much, but he can by God do that. Tell me about the old couple. Tell me about her beautiful brown hair. Show me how he touches it while she talks, drinks, smokes her cigarette. She's sick, ain't she? Somebody asked her how she was feeling. She responds in technical terms. She tells him she believes she'll wait till tomorrow to shave her head. And he touches her again and nods. Tell me that story. Tell it to me again. It never gets old. Tell me about the bartender, 10 years younger than me, but 10 years older in the face and hands. Life is hard on beauty around here. Don't tell me about winners. Don't tell me about mistresses and love triangles. Tell me about the guy with the bottle behind the dumpsters. Tell me how this night he only knows one word, and that word is her name. Don't tell it with fancy words and metaphors. I ain't got time. I got to get down to the liquor store before it closes. And tell it in the language of fools. And make it so it'll fit on a bathroom stall, a jail cell wall. Make it so it'll fit on the inside of a whiskey label, the back of a hearse, the back of a lottery ticket, a matchbook. Make it so it'll fit in the hole in the bottom of my shoe where it'll do me some good. Don't tell me about swingers and orgies. Tell me about the guy who can't get it up anymore. The woman who thinks it's her fault. Tell me about the lingerie she buys and takes back to the store the next day. Don't tell me about movements and causes. Tell me about the little queer boy trying to get out of high school alive. Tell me about the housewife still trying to look sexy with one tit. Tell me those stories. Tell me. Tell me. Fuck it. I'll tell it myself. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. This is not from my new book of poems called uh, Some Dark Holler. 39 years, 5 months, 25 days, 13 hours, 25 min minutes, 17 seconds. I've been carrying this knot around, calcified like iron in the pit of my stomach. I'm an old knotty pine. Run a chainsaw through me and you won't know where the knot is till the saw stalls out in your hands. It's heavy as a deathbed prayer, ugly as a mud fence, dumb as a bag of hair, useless as an ashtray on a motorcycle. <laughs> Squeeze it and you'll hear the sound of bluegrass, hound dogs in the distance, flooded carburetors, a grown man learning to read, the hiss of oxygen tanks, the Spirit of God moving in strange tongues. Squeeze it and you'll hear hymens tearing, catfish croaking on cutting boards, Whippoorwills calling the lost lovers in the dark. Underwear rustling on clotheslines. Rocking chairs creaking on front porches. Squeeze it and you'll hear the sound of motor oil dripping. Crystal meth sizzling in pipes. Flies buzzing around a squash turtle in the middle of the road. A diamond carbide bit drilling down through solid rock. It's hate cyst and love's ulcer. A neurosis of the gut. A love and a hate for the same thing, stuck in the, stuck in there like God and the devil crammed inside a hickory nut shell. It's not love one day and hate the next. It's a thing you both love and hate simultaneously, every second of every minute of every hour of every day. It's hard to get people to believe in it, feel enough empathy to let you go off and drink yourself crazy. Black people get it, I think. Hell, I used to wish I was a nigger. Then at least the knot would have a name. 
A thing cannot be properly loved or hated until it is named. And I love it like Christ loves the church. And I hate it like the Klan hates the Jews. But I cannot name it. It grows in my gut, loved, hated, unnamed, like the mongoloid child buried up in the woods on Greenbrier Ridge. Unnamed like the barefoot God who roams these hills and hollers, blind, deaf, but not dumb. He speaks in riddles, in tongues, a poetry without form, without measure, without rhyme or reason, and the sound of it can talk the hair off a dog. Unnamed like the secondhand paperbacks in thrift stores and dumpsters, the covers torn away so the author can't get his due. He don't want his due. He don't want his name attached to this mess, this knot. The great author, the great physician, he will not cure this. He will not name this. This thing that just looks like this, smells like this, sounds like this, feels like this.